Hello everyone, and welcome to our presentation on cross-cultural comparability of diversity constructs in international large-scale assessments for the virtual IMPS 2020 conference. My name is Justin Wild, and I am a research analyst at the International Association for the Evaluation of Educational Achievement, or IEA for short. I conducted this study along with my colleagues Agnes Stansel Piontek, Yuan Ling Liao, Minga Chen, and Moitza Rojman. Of note on the title, originally we did want to look specifically at diversity constructs and hope to do so in the future. But for the material presented here, we simply examine constructs in the school. In this presentation, I will discuss the background of our study, data and methods used, the study results, and plans for further research. Let's discuss the background of the study. Our study conducted research on latent constructs, which are unobservable phenomena that cannot be directly measured. Unlike observing the amount of time it takes a runner to go from point A to point B, we cannot directly observe someone's mathematics self-efficacy or job satisfaction. Rather, we create items on an assessment or questionnaire, which we evaluate together as a latent variable or scale. These items are examined together in a mathematical model, and there are several methods to determine this model. Two that are common in psychometrics are confirmatory factor analysis, or CFA, and item response theory, or IRT. When we use such models with different groups or populations, we would like to ensure that the model measures a latent variable similarly for each group. This can be called measurement equivalence, and when we observe that group models are similar, we commonly say they are invariant, meaning models do not vary between groups. While if group models are not similar, we can say they are non-invariant. One possible explanation of why we might observe non-invariance comes from the following example by Kim and Wang. When students in a group where modesty is considered a virtue respond to items about math self-confidence, they may avoid responses at the high end of the scale, whereas students in a group where self-confidence is promoted may provide more easily responses at the high end of the scale. We'd like to mention a common method for examining invariance in CFA as it involves several steps. This type of analysis is often called multiple group CFA or MGCFA and looks at three levels of invariance, each level building on the previous level or levels. Configural invariance only requires that the modeled items appropriately measure the latent variable for all groups. It establishes that the latent variable is conceptually the same in each group, however, no statistical comparisons are possible. Metric invariance adds the constraint that the mathematical relationships between items and the latent variables are the same across all groups. When a latent variable exhibits metric invariance, the latent variable values are usable in correlational analyses, including regression. Finally, scalar invariance adds a further restriction that the latent variable is measured on the same scale, or that the intercept values or mean values of the items are the same across all groups. When scalar invariance is exhibited, group mean values of the latent variable are comparable. You may see such comparisons in ranking tables of international large-scale assessments, such as the Trends in International Mathematics and Science Study, or TIMS, the Progress in International Reading Literacy Study, or PEARLS, and the Program for International Student Assessment, or PISA. Speaking of International Large-Scale Assessments, or ILSAs, these studies provide several challenges when trying to establish invariant scales across the many participating countries or education systems. First, as the number of groups becomes increasingly large, additional group comparisons make it more likely that certain parameters will exhibit non-invariance. Secondly, mathematically, more scale items combined with many groups makes non-invariance more likely as there are more parameters to consider. However, the number of items used to measure a latent variable should be determined by the theoretical construct and there is no justification to purposely create short or long scales, short being few items and long being many items. We might ask how did our work on this get started? 
The IEA has been scaling data for the Teaching and Learning International Survey, or TALIS, since its first cycle in 2008. Now, in its third cycle, in 2018, the number of groups has greatly increased. Though we updated our MGCFA method to incorporate partial measurement invariance, which allows some parameters to remain unconstrained for certain groups, we still found that most scales exhibited only metric invariance. You may recall from slide 6 that this implies group means cannot be compared and a ranking table cannot be provided. We reflected on the issue of invariance and the method MGCFA and noted that IRT could produce a model more appropriate for the response options of the items. Perhaps IRT methods for conducting invariance testing could lead to more appropriate results of scale comparisons. Furthermore, we wanted to extend our research to other ILSAs to ensure that our observed results were not related to a single study's case. Let's now look at the data and methods. We used data from three studies, TIMS, PEARLS, and TALIS, using their most current cycles to examine similar scales in variance results. You can see that in each study, there are a large number of countries or education systems that form the groups for invariance testing. Each study has a certain target population or populations and conducts several contextual questionnaires to collect additional information from participants, such as attitudes and beliefs of students, teachers, and principals. For our study, we focused on the common questionnaires, teachers, and schools, with school questionnaires being completed by school principals. We use three scales, one teacher scale, job satisfaction, and two school scales, emphasis on academic success and disciplinary problems. Recall that TIMS is conducted at two grade levels, four and eight years of schooling, PEARLS is conducted at four years of schooling, and TALIS is conducted with teachers and schools at ISCAD Level 2. ISCAD is short for International Standard Classification of Education, where Level 2 is recognized as lower secondary school. The table shows the number of items in each scale. Of note, job satisfaction in TALIS was measured by a two-factor scale, meaning theoretically it measures two latent variables that are interrelated. For MGCFA, we evaluated models based on slightly relaxed criteria of model fit indices. Of note, we did not use partial measurement invariance for the TALIS scales, as was done for the IEA's analysis of these same scales in the study itself. Because we wanted to compare the simplified MGCFA method with TIMS and PEARL scales. Our goal was to compare similar scales between the three studies using previously established methods. Next, our invariance analysis using IRT examined the root mean squared deviation and used criteria from the Program for the International Assessment of Adult Competencies, or PIAC, with regard to non-cognitive scales. Our goal with IRT was to compare its invariance analysis conclusions with MGCFA results. We note that the methods differ in their underlying measurement models, analysis criteria, level of analysis, with CFA focusing on the model level and IRT the item level, as well as their assumptions. Therefore, we compared only the invariance decisions reached by each method. Also, we would like to note that there are not yet agreed upon standards of invariance criteria to make such decisions. As previous studies have noted, there is less research into these criteria when many groups are included in the data, such as the case with ILSAs. Before conducting the study, we looked to the literature for what we might assume to find, as well as asserted an assumption of our own. As mentioned before, mathematically, including many groups and analyzing a scale with many items, we may find that such scales are observed to be non-invariant when using MGCFA. From the literature, both simulation studies and those using real-world data found that CFA and IRT methods generally produce similar results. However, this depends on the criteria. Finally, our own assumption was that when comparing similar scales from different assessments, which is a novel characteristic of our study, we assume that similar scales would exhibit similar invariance results. 
So let's have a look at our results. Using MGCFA to evaluate invariance, we found that the teacher job satisfaction scale exhibited metric invariance in all studies. The two school scales exhibited non-invariance in all studies, with the exception of TALIS 2018. However, we noted that, that with the exception of the TALIS study, the school scales had 10 or more items. Finally, of those scales exhibiting invariance, the most constrained model reached was metric invariance, indicating that mean comparisons among groups are not possible. IRT results were similar, with all those scales reaching at least configural invariance in MGCFA also exhibiting invariance for all items. Of the remaining scales, some had only 25% of the items exhibiting non-invariance in just one country, though not necessarily the same country, such as the school scale emphasis on academic success in PEARLS. Others exhibited non-invariance in 70% of their items for at least five countries, such as disciplinary problems in TIMS grade 8. If we return to our assumptions, we found that our results support the mathematical argument that with many groups, longer scales were non-invariant, while the shortest scales, with eight or less items, reached at least configural invariance. However, we would like to note that this was not consistent. A scale with four items exhibited only configural invariance, while longer scales, namely those with five, seven, and eight items, exhibited metric invariance, or a higher level of invariance with more restrictions. Regarding the literature review assumption, this was also supported with CFA and IRT analyses producing similar results. Regarding our own hypothesis that similar scales would exhibit similar invariance results between ILSAs, this was not true of the school scales. When hypothesizing possible explanations, we first recognized that this was aligned with a mathematical argument, as the scales in TALIS were much shorter than those in TIMS and PEARLS. However, we also recognized that the sample size for schools was much smaller than that for teachers and could be a possible explanation. Testing of more teacher and school scales is necessary. As mentioned previously, there are no agreed-upon criteria for evaluating invariance in data with many groups. One result of this study is that we found the criteria used for each method, which came from previous literature and technical reports, resulted in similar invariance observations. However, the specific criteria used may not result in the ability to compare latent variable means across groups. If we wish to come to a usable criteria, we must ask ourselves what we wish to compare and what criteria will help us evaluate if those comparisons are justified. For example, perhaps comparing latent variable means between groups, that is, observing scalar invariance, is less desirable than being able to use the latent variable group means in correlation or regression analysis, that is, observing metric invariance. This last point from the previous section leads into our first point in this section, further research. At present, the invariance criteria are relatively strict. In further research, we intend to examine what criteria allows for meaningful decisions about the comparability of groups and ILSAs. To this end, we plan to examine invariance testing using effect size approaches. We also hope to pair this with simulation studies to evaluate the robustness of results. In addition, there are other methods we could explore, such as multi-level CFA, which accounts for the nested structure of the sampling design, and multi-level factor mixture modeling, which creates latent classes of groups, allowing for comparisons of group latent variable means within the same class while cautioning comparisons with groups in other classes. Thank you for taking the time to view our presentation. We look forward to interacting with you in the future. The following slide contains references for this presentation.